Today, the conversation that we're having is, um, is religion fundamentally against human rights? And I am so excited by this conversation. <laughs> also a little bit scared because I know some of these panelists have really, really strong opinions on uh, this topic. Um, what I ask of you guys as a panel from the outset, not looking at anyone in particular, please keep the jargon down. Disclaimer from the outset, there might be some opinions that offend some people. That's a disclaimer from the outset. If, you're, if that's something that's going to be difficult for you guys, I suggest this is maybe not the best conversation for you. Yeah? Okay, let me introduce our guests. Introduce yourself, guys. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, hello. hello, everybody. Hello. Great. Awesome. Uh, my name is Duani Tombush. Um, I'm, I'm one of Chiki's besties. <laughs> That's by force, by the way. That's by like, force. I didn't give her that title. She's yeah. just given it to herself. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I am Nigerian Indian, uh, half Nigerian, half Indian. Um, so I guess, in a certain extent, I bring a Hindu slash Christian perspective to the conversation. Um, I was born and raised in Nigeria, but I've lived in Kenya for two years. I love it here. Um, and yeah, I think, like I, like Chiki has said, these are all opinions. You might agree or disagree with some of them, but it's a conversation, so let's enjoy it while we're at it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm Max. You'll excuse my voice, but uh, Monday was a heavy night. Um, <laughs> I guess is it Wednesday and Tuesday match. Um, I would describe myself as a very opinionated polemicist. That's the only big one. <laughs> and then a study of all things religion, Western Christianity especially, I would say. So, it will be fun today. Italian, lived in Kenya for 22 years. So, yeah. Only because we tend to have a really opinionated audience and it's really hard to control. So what we're going to do this time is I'm giving each member three minutes to make their case from their perspective. Mm -hmm. The things that they're going to be talking about is the difference between religious texts and religious practice, number one, the role of women in the world and how connected that is to do with religion, number two, poverty in the world and what that has, how that's connected with religion, number three, and the LGBT community in the world and how that's connected, either positively or negatively, with religion number four. Did you? I did not come here to give a lecture or anything like that. There's something that I want you guys to take away this evening. And that is that at the end of the day, regardless of all the differences, regardless of all the creeds, the skin colors, uh, the orientations, we are humans. And it seems in today's world, we're being divided constantly. But we never seem to remember that where we start is the fact that underneath the skin, we are all similar. Religion has been the moral compass of most human beings. What people do with that religion or what they do with trying to change those narratives, that's someone else's business. It's up to us to stand against those kind of things. Like I said, when I came in, I said, yeah, the terrorists at the end of the line. But the reality is, my religion has been here for a very long time. It, it, it's before human rights and all that stuff. Nevertheless, we are being driven apart, especially here in Africa. Today, I'd rather we discuss things like social justice. That's the kind of topics we should be talking about instead of thinking about human rights and religion and how it divides people. So I'm giving you guys the, the opportunity to ask me any question that you feel is appropriate. I'm a human rights lawyer and I'm a Muslim. The fact that Western people 
put it as human rights does not mean it existed before the 1940s mm -hmm. and the UN. Yeah. So I think we should just get that clear because people do the same thing with homosexuality. Oh, it's Westerners that brought this thing. Westerners also brought Christianity to Africa, so let's not get carried away. Um, then down to the actual topic, down to the actual topic at hand is religion fundamentally opposed to human rights. I think I do agree with Max when I say religion in and of itself is not. If anything, it's the complete opposite. However, it's it's not far fetched to say that religion has been dominated by society and culture since the days of the four Jesus. So the fact that when we classify something as religion, when we think of Christianity or Hinduism, we forget a lot of the time. Even when we read the Bible, we think, oh yeah, this is you know canonized word from God. And that's all great and whatnot, but it's all men who wrote the Bible. Um, I'm a woman, I'm a Christian, I believe God loves me, and I don't believe God created a world where he expected men to lead and women to follow. My mom once told me I was a bit too extreme because there can't be two captains on one ship. There has to be a captain and there has to be a co-captain. I called bullshit on her because mm. as far as I'm concerned, I was born to be a captain of any ship I'm on. Yes, yes. Um, so for me, it's the, it's the distinct need for us to differentiate between religion and what religious institutions sell us as religion, right? Religion and all religions, I think, I, I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong, the basic underlying understanding of all religions is the greatest law is the law of love, right? The law of love equates to equality. The law of love equates to sharing, respect, all the things we want from human rights, right? Um, and I find it very problematic when people draw a line between religion and I guess which is why I find most people, uh, most institutions problematic in the world is men have used religion, which to be very fair, a big reason religion was introduced into society was to create law and order, right? If you give people something to strongly believe in, it's easier to get them to follow laws than if you just randomly plunk laws on top of them and tell them you can't do this or you can't do that. So the fact that religion was used to create law and order and men more or less led religion, there's only one underlying thing that comes out of that. A specific gender is here and a specific gender is here. Thank you I'm very good. much. Uh, she said she's good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I know you were enjoying yourself. She said <laughs> Does anyone on the panel want to greatly agree or disagree with anyone someone has said? Something that really struck me that I thought, actually at least you, Devani, would have picked up on, was the comment made that as a child going to Sunday school, if you're taught at Sunday school that you're secondary, that's problematic. And, 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 and it's all well and good saying that it was an allegory, an allegory, but there are also literalist believers of the Bible. That might be your perspective, but not everyone shares that perspective. Unfortunately, Unfortunately maybe. <laughs> so no one really challenged that. I'd like that. to respond to the lady. Thank you. Um, just to respond to my fellow uh, panelists, I think this is where now things... Uh, heat up. Uh, not heat up. Relax. I know you're looking for a fight. I'm not going to be in a fight. We're civilized people. But what I said was that answering the question um, is religion fundamentally opposed to human rights? What I said was religion has been here for a long time, since the dawn of man. Uh, it's dictated to us how we deal with each other. And this new concept of human rights that we're constantly being bombarded with is something that has just come about not too long ago. And that's what I was trying to say. So in, in reality, when we talk about human rights, why is it that it has to be on paper? There's that certain things that you as a human being should be aware of. And how were you aware of before? I can tell you as a Muslim today that the reason why I live in peace with my neighbors, the reason why I treat my family well, my friends well, is because of what I've been taught by religion, not what law school taught me about what human rights are. And as I said, it's a Western concept that has just been promoted to us 
when we've had these things since the dawn of our empires, the Egyptian empire, wherever you want to look in Africa, we had written laws. You know, they tell us that we haven't written anything. We have these things, but we don't refer to them. We only refer to now things that came about in different contexts, in different times. And that's what I had mentioned uh, that my dear sister had taken out of context. But if you'd like to respond. Okay, so just a quick response. Me. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, hearing you say it again, I will have to say, I, I don't really think I took it out of context. Um, because, once again, you're not saying the phrase human rights, you're saying the concept of human rights. And that's where I even find you contradicting yourself, is because you're saying religions have always had laws about how we treat each other. That is human rights. Right? The fact that white people came in the 1940s when globalization had really started to take world stage and said we're all interacting with each other now so we have to respect human rights right because japanese people are killing white people think they're lower vice versa and countries are starting to interact more with each other it doesn't take away from the fact that human rights has always been a concept and i think it only becomes a disadvantage to us to categorize it and set it aside and say, this is what the Western man brought about, this thing of human rights. No, he just put it in a UN document, but human rights will, has, before religion, human rights existed. Like, after religion, God forbid, should there be a time, human rights will continue to exist. Mm -hmm. So I think they work hand in hand, and I think it's only a disadvantage for us to separate them and continue to categorize human rights as a concept promoted by white people. But I, yeah, honestly, let's, let's, let's talk. Now this is where the, the it beat. starts. <laughs> so uh, in all honesty, all this human rights that you're hearing about right now, this was basically written by a group of people or uh, a society that decided to subjugate other people first. It was a cop-out. Oh, we've enslaved you for all these hundreds of years, thousands of years, and now we've come up with the concept of human rights. I am telling you, the reality is, we had these laws. That's why we never went, maybe we had a few people that decided they were going to, you know, uh, trade in slaves or, or, or burn down villages and whatnot. Those were individuals. This was a systematic program by a number of states, monarchies, uh, from the Spanish Inquisition all the way down. Let me start with um, women. I'll speak from Christianity, since I think that's what I know most. Um, from the creation story itself, the female is created as a partner to the man. Uh, a mere rib pulled out of, <laughs> out of the man's side. Something to pass your time with. <laughs> and um, I think I think that that's a little ridiculous in itself. But then to add salt to the wound, it's the woman that ultimately makes the wrong choice. It's the woman that eats from the the apple that God planted, but was not there for man to eat. Um, yeah. Um, I would get into how it seems ridiculous that in the first place there was a tree that you were not supposed to eat <laughs> and yet was put there for you. But that's that's just one thing. Going on this there's, there's a lot of things um, throughout the Bible um, female periods are considered unclean. Uh, the man is not to interact with the woman at that time. Uh, you can't do blah, blah, blah. There's, there's a ton of things wrong. Hi. Thank you so much. Uh, you resonated with a lot. Of, I've never seen so many like, <laughs> head nodding and you were the, the object of the person who wasn't so sure. Max. Now, let's just run through everything quickly because there's a lot. Um, <laughs> female roles. Um, all monotheistic religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism start off from a very patriarchal system so that the female role has always been obscured. Just because men had to have authority, that, that's a really easy answer. It's unfortunate, but that's exactly how it went. Um, 
As a Christian, I'll say though, that if you go to the Gospels, you do see a more prominent role that comes for women throughout the whole story. From Mary, the mother of Christ himself, to Mary Magdalene. Women had a very prominent role in the ministry of Christ. So already you see a small progression already happening, a leap, a qualitative leap happening within the religious system. Then obviously the Middle Ages and the church having to maintain control had to put them in a very segregated shadow area where the men had to still keep control of religion and everything else. There's so much. Um, <laughs> LGBTQ. Uh, LGBT. Hi. Okay. Uh, Islam also came into Africa from the East. It's maybe an Eastern concept in about the 7th, 8th century. So how do you make your peace? We've been here for way longer than that. So even that was brought. So how do you make your peace with saying religion is not a, you know, an outsider concept, whereas human rights are? Um, and I agree with you too, not because I have a bias, because Max is my friend. But, <laughs> but Max, I think, I, and this is not a question, but I think I would take issue with saying, you know, um, because Western, uh, Westernization came in through colonialism, and now that's what we have, we should accept it. Because therein lies the problem, to your point. We had massive stories, we had histories, we had everything. They might not have been written, they were oral or whatever it was, but because it was brought upon us and we were told this is it, it's the whip or the Bible, um, we can't just take it because it's like, well, this is what we have. So I think that to me might be a bit problematic. Yeah. Thank you. We have two. There's the institution and there's the religion. Like what, what we go to church and everything. And first of all, I, I had the guy in black that are talking about the woman and the fruit. And then you said that maybe, and then the woman and the rape, and then you said maybe it was a way to have a man of bearing to the woman. And I don't think so. And also don't think that there's a hidden meaning, meaning in all those stories. I think Genesis is literal. That there was Garden of Eden, and there was a fruit and everything that is there. My opinion, and what have Number seven day Adventist, so we eat the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I think what I think is just that someone picked up the book, the Bible, and started and went to play some chauvinism in it and translated all things the other way around. The woman gave the man the fruit. The woman did not hold a gun to the man's head and tell him to eat this fruit. Mm -hmm. The man made a choice. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem we have today. Mm -hmm. Everything that, all the choices that happen in the society, all the bad choices, somehow it ends up being blamed on the man. Mm -hmm. the, the woman. The woman did not do. The woman was supposed to take care of the family. <coughs> the woman was supposed to take care of the baby. The woman was supposed to keep the husband do whatever. The woman was supposed to. It's just that, it's just that chauvinist mentality that we have. It has nothing to do with Christianity. A lot of the uh, cultures you examine show that before the presence of religion, such as Christianity and Islam, there was a lot more equality in society. And I think we tend to forget that because we become very wrapped up in what Jesus means to us. And I'm a Christian, so I completely agree. I also agree with, I forget your name, sorry, the lady in pink, who mentioned that a lot of what happens that we blame on religion isn't actually religion itself. It's human beings trying to find a way to control and justify their bad behavior. And it's a way of looking for something that's easier to use and control according to what our truth is instead of reflecting, instead of contextualizing the Bible and instead of being honest about what God would really truly want as opposed to what we as human beings would want. My Christian friend, well, uh, the Catholic Church, the church which is known for spreading our Christianity, has never allowed women to be priests. Okay? Mm -hmm. So how is that again not infringing against the rights of women? Again, is there any book in the Bible that is written by a woman? Yeah. Is there any? So quick question, how does the church infringe on human on the rights of women? And then again, uh, the, the scripture, it's against gays. Let's be totally honest. As in, it's not against slavery, but it's against LGBTQs. I mean, that is utterly insane, sorry. Uh, I don't think I have any other question. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I have a problem. Is it 
that religion is actually inflicting on our human rights, or we as mankind are, behind, are hiding behind religion because we are evil. As, <laughs> yes, because we have the choice to be evil or to do the right thing. So are we actually hiding behind religion? The way I view it is that um, there's more synergy and more connection between religion and human rights. And I'm coming from the point of I'm trying to simplify um, all the topics we've talked about today in the simplest form. And the four panelists seated in front of us, um, you have your own defined beliefs when it comes to the particular religion you believe in. Uh, for example, Hamza, it's Islam. The gentleman next to him, uh, it's Christianity. And the no. lovely lady at the end, um, I believe that's Hindu. Um, I believe when you simplify, let me talk about Christianity because I'm more con conversant with Christianity. When you talk about Christianity and look at it in the simplest form, it talks about simple things like love your neighbor, but it doesn't specify who your neighbor is. It doesn't specify is your neighbor a gay person. It doesn't specify um, should, you, should you not love women as equal as you love yourself. And it also talks about um, Eve coming into the world to assist Adam. And there's a statement that I'd like us to look at, uh, for example, when you talk about ladies coming to the world to offer support to the man, you'll get a lot of um, not positive response from ladies in particular. But picture yourself in a situation where you've gone out on a date with your lady and you haven't opened the door for her. What's the first thing she'll tell you? You're not being man enough. Are you not being a man? And with that statement, she's suggesting that, as a man, you should do certain things to her. Yeah, that's basically it. Hamza says that when he talks about the, the concept of human rights, he talks about it as having been brought by the white people, right? But I feel he's saying the exact same thing that the lady is saying, only that he's willing to address the fact that there's a Western agenda uh, yeah. in the framing of the human yeah. rights as they exist. Yeah. I think that's saying the exact same thing. It's just he's talking about the Western agenda that came, they, that came with it. And my question is about the third thing we're supposed to discuss, poverty. Um, the framing of human rights as it exists does not... Okay, no, maybe I should start with my last question. I'm just wondering whether the question is moot, because what is the purpose of having this discussion, right? Um, discussing whether religion is um, on opposite sides with um, human rights. I'm wondering what would be the, what, after we get the answer, then what? I'm wondering whether the question would be, what is religion and what was it supposed to do? And what are human rights and what were they supposed to do? And have they done that? So that, because the framing of human rights as they exist, put civil and political rights above socioeconomic rights, right? And religion focuses on the spiritual above socioeconomic needs. So both of these things are failing at what they intended to do, to focus on equality, right? That's how I feel. So I'm just wondering about whether the question is what, yes. Hi guys. Um, my question is mostly directed towards Hamza, but I think most people made the same point. And the point was that um, most of the social issues that we face today are they stem from individual agendas. If you're being true to ourselves, these are becoming systemic issues. If you look at what's happening in the US right now, these people are using religion to stop the whole LGBTQ movement. They're using religion against race. They're using religion against pretty much every single social issue. So we can't really say that these are individual agendas because at the end of the day, if we all, um, if you come back two, three generations from now, those children will know religions as this and not what we are arguing about right now. So how can you really say that's not religion making an impact, this kind of impact? Please accept them as personal opinions. Please. This is not a representation of, of the entire conversation, but this is a space that people are entitled to their opinions and their views. So please don't take it personally. All right, uh, so I want to address three different things that people in the audience have said. I don't know, does Hinduism count as a religion. an indigenous religion? Yes. Because I think yes. it was the first. Yes. All right. 
So, I mean, I mean in India. I mean in India. So, I'm going to just go ahead on that. I'm going to just go in. So, um, I think it's very interesting when we have all these conversations about Islam, Christianity, and sometimes, of course, all the other religions are shielded from progress in this conversation. And also, on the you know, on the hierarchy of religions almost, you know, they come after the colonizing religions, quote unquote. But I think what's very interesting is that it is the idea that I think human beings disrupt conversations because they get too carried away with whose agenda, when, why, how. At the end of the day, what is the concept? It's human rights. At the end of the day, what is the concept? And why I say this is because I'm a large feminist and I get... Every time I start a conversation with someone, the biggest distraction from the conversation is, oh, but there's a group of women who are like women, men bashers, and they're this, and they're that, and, you know. But at the end of the day, what does human rights stand for? What does it mean? At the end of the day, what does feminism stand for? What does it mean? That's what we should be going with, not the different groups of people who are exceptions to the rule or who are building something different from what the actual topic at hand is. Anthony, last thing, about uh, women expecting men to open doors for them. Oh, I was waiting. Yes. <laughs> I was waiting for a response. Yes. <laughs> so, once again, largely very cultural. I know a lot of women who want men to open doors for them because those same women are expected that when they walk into their homes, they're supposed to cook a really good meal in the kitchen for their man, the same man who opened the door for them. So... That in and of itself is a completely, I feel that's a huge conversation that we could embark on that's very different from where we are now in terms of religion, so I don't want to detract from that conversation, but I do think that for every action, there's a reaction, so we always have to keep that in mind, and we need to think about that whenever we reflect on the behaviors of human beings. It's incredibly important, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Max has loosened his tie. I don't know, I don't know what that means. Max. <laughs> well, you and I need to have drinks later. <laughs> the lady here, the lovely lady. That's my aunt. <laughs> yeah. Yes, honey. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, there was so much. So much. Um. <sighs> I struggle to consider a bunch of literally literary lit where literaries. <laughs> literarist rednecks as representing religion. I actually don't. There will always be as I said in the beginning <coughs> some notions are very high and they're very great and they're very good and they're meant to create peace, they're meant to create love, they're meant to create fraternal bonding, they're meant to create all those things, but the fact I can, no one can avoid that there's going to be a bu many people that oftentimes, based on ignorance, are going to are going to be assholes. Like, like they will exist. But is that religion? I, I struggle to think that that typology of human somehow now takes the label of you represent faith, or you represent spirituality, or you represent religion. It's so interesting you mentioned uh, liberation theology because, mind you, then the Catholic Church actually chastised it for a very long time, the, especially in South America, because the, you know, making a lot of the poor people think that <laughs> things could change and that things ought to have changed. And the Church, or re one thing I will agree with, religion does dwell in power. In the moment it doesn't <laughs> have power, it's to it. It, yeah, it stops, it stops being important. If, if I don't dominate as an institution your mind and your belief system, uh, I don't make, I mean, you know, you may, there's a lady here that mentioned, yes, in the West, you know, you don't see so much dependency on religion anymore, a strong sense of religious self as far as society is concerned. I do believe that when you grow, what? Well, when it seems like there's a growth that is economic or financial, it, 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 it's, it's still something we're learning. We're yet to do the statistic properly. We'll probably know in 100 years how that goes. Um, it does seem that as societies, 
they evolve financially or, or, or at least become uh, more comfortable financially, it does seem that there's more people not going to church anymore. So yes, there is a correlation. We are yet to have proper figures, but the, there seems to be a correlation. This is the last statement, so make it a good one. Thank you. Uh, too much pressure, but uh, <laughs> just to uh, uh, the sister, the young lady over there, who is talking, she's busy on her phone, sorry. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, and uh, I'd like you guys to understand something. When something is called a right, in legal terms, it's something that can be withdrawn. It can be withdrawn. So you need to understand that. And this is where I conflict with when people say, you know, human rights and all this. Um, because slavery was legal. Um, uh, subjugation of, of women was legal. Uh, these are things that were given to us as rights. So what I'm trying to say in my argument uh, in that sense is that we're humans. You're born with certain rights. You understand? By you being human, you have those things and no one should be able to tell you this is yours or this is not yours. For me, the thing always to take away from Red Corner, thank you Hamza, is it's okay if we disagree. Yeah. That's perfectly okay. What's not okay is when we don't respect one another. Yeah. So let's all leave with the opinions that may have changed, may stay the same. Yeah? But let's just all leave with a baseline level of respect for one another. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, you're welcome to stay behind and chat. It normally happens. You see me and my aunt staggering out of here at one in the morning, normally after we've had a heated debate after everything. So thank you guys so much for coming. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to go. Um, thank you, panelists. Guys, can we give them a round of applause? Yeah. Really awesome. You've had an incredibly tough job here today. So thank you very much. Thank you guys for coming. Give yourself a round of applause.